you like right after the primary in August, you it was announced that you were going to be Bill Schuette's running mate. Then your house burned down. <laughs> Everything okay? I mean, that, that that had to really be tough. I mean, you have a family, uh, you know, four kids. Um, how, how did you manage? Oh, every, day by day. It, thank you for asking about that, Tim. We just, we certainly didn't expect uh, to have our house burned down to the ground. Um, and it really, I mean, it, that was, it was incredible to literally lose everything, but realize that we needed nothing. Every the, just the outpouring of love and support from our friends and family, neighbors, uh, our church, the community. Just, I mean, it truly was. It, it truly was inspiring in that sense. And you know, it was. Um, we we spent a couple weeks just getting getting settled and making sure because our kids are our, our family is our priority. My husband Brad and mm -hmm. I just making sure the kids got settled, new school you know, supplies and just that kind of thing, making sure that we're, they're feeling a sense of security and stability and moving forward as we, as we start to rebuild. Um, but we had to get back to the election too, cause it's just, it's important. Absolutely. How, how old are your four kids, by the way? I've got three boys and a girl. Uh, my daughter's flanked. Her name is Charlie. She is uh, 12. My oldest is Easton. He's 13. And then our two younger ones, uh, Fisher is nine and Gage is 10. What do you want to say to people like you, you know, I and mean, you're pretty young to be doing this. I, you, I don't, you're not even 40, right? Nope. And so, and, and you've got a young family. Uh, what do you want to say to other people like you out there listening right now uh, about the, you know, the shooty and posthumous lions ticket? What are you going to do for families like yours? Well, I think this election is truly about Michigan's future. And uh, you know, we have a choice to make. And it's, it's, just the one question, are we going to go backward to the lost decade where we had uh, you know, 15% unemployment, we had home sales making up, uh, foreclosures making up 75% of our home sales, our families were leaving the state in droves, um, or are we going to move Michigan forward and continue this comeback where you know we've, we've grown jobs, our personal income is growing, and you know, Bill Schuette is a fighter for our families. And you know, I, I bring a perspective of, you know, a busy working mom uh, with, you know, kids and a family and a husband. And, um, you know, that that's what makes up Michigan, our families and our and our people. And, you know, that's what the Bill Schuette Paycheck Agenda is about. It's about people, you know, lowering our auto insurance rates, providing uh, tax relief for our hardworking families and um, focusing on uh, career technical education and skilled trades, vocational education, uh, and and literacy for our education. And you know, we're we're excited to get to work to continue the comeback and to move Michigan forward because this election is about Michigan's future and families. We were just talking to our uh, local businessman Hans Stark. He owns Michigan Tile and Carpet here in Battle Creek. Uh, and he said, you know, they're very busy. You know, the economy is going great. Uh, things are, are looking really good right now. I, I, how much of that, of course, I know your dad is the chief of staff for the uh, governor, uh, Rick Snyder, right now, but how much of that is from the uh, work that uh, Governor Snyder and your dad and others have done, and, and what are the things you want to continue and expand on? I was really proud to be a part of Michigan's comeback. Uh, in 2010, I ran for the Michigan House of Representatives because you know nobody was immune from the lost decade uh, You know from, from Jennifer Granholm and the policies that uh, Bill Schuette's opponent, Gretchen Whitmer, supported. You know, my brothers, uh, my brothers-in-law both lost their jobs. One of them had had to leave the state. And, um, you know, I was really proud to go to work and be part of that comeback. It wasn't easy. It wasn't always fun. But but we had very tough decisions to make. And as a result, uh, Michigan is an environment that created a competitive atmosphere for jobs to grow um, and for people to come back to the state and find a job and uh, putting an emphasis on quality education wherever kids live and empowering parents to be a part of that, um, uh, to be, you know, the the part of their children's education. And so I, I think I think we've come a long way from the last decade, but we, we have turned a corner, but there is still more to do. We have to lower our auto insurance rates. We paid way too much for way too long. Um, and it's time to get something done with that. And we did, you know, part of uh, Michigan's comeback was creating a simple, fair, and efficient tax structure for our job providers uh, to help grow the economy. It's time to it's time to provide some tax relief for our hardworking citizens too. 
How do we do that with auto insurance rates? Oh, there is, you know, Michigan pays the highest auto insurance rates uh, throughout the entire country. And other states have, have managed, you know, to provide quality care, uh, quality coverage uh, at lower rates. And I think that's absolutely something Michigan needs to look at. Um, we have to, we have to, uh, I'm interested in allowing uh, for individuals to to explore uh, choices in their uh, personal injury protection coverage. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big part of it. We need to make sure that um, that that the fees that are uh, being charged are fair and and that the coverage is uh, is uh, a quality uh, for for accident victims, but at the same time isn't um, isn't. Uh, completely unreasonable uh, or exorbitant in terms of um, a cost differential from, you know, a auto accident, you know, the same service for a victim in an auto accident versus, you know, somebody coming in from uh, just an accident of other of other sorts. Right now, the uh, uh, ticket is, uh, you, you know, uh, down about 10 points, double digits in polling, but about 14 percent of voters kind of uncommitted right now. What do you want to say to those voters? Well, we live in Michigan and Michigan truly is a purple state. And uh, we knew, uh, Bill Schutte and I knew going into this that it was it was uh, going to be you know an all out effort all the way to the end, all the way to November 6th. And, um, and that's okay because what matters to Michigan, uh, these issues, we've got to make sure we're getting our message out. And, you know, polls, are a snapshot in time, and what we've seen is very encouraging. And that, and that the race continues to tighten. We can feel it as people are starting to engage and uh, pay more attention as the closer the election gets. And that's exactly where we want to be. I mean, you know, there are there are tons of uh, tons of examples where where individual candidates were down in the polls and come uh, come back and win the election. It's not about where you're at two weeks before the election. It's about where you're at on election day. Yep, we learned that uh, two years ago. Uh, Lisa Possumus Lyons, Lieutenant Governor candidate. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much, Tim. Yep.